Hi, welcome to episode 8 of 365 in this season of a couple of things. After thinking a bit about what to talk about today, I decided to share about what I've learned from working in tech for 10 years. Yes, this January makes it 10 years that I've been working in tech. I've been working for longer, but to keep it simple, let's leave it at 10 years in tech. And so I'll be discussing some of my journey and things that I've learned so far. I hope you enjoy it. If you followed me for a bit, you've probably heard about how I started working as a content creator for a digital marketing agency started by a friend that I met on Twitter. We work with lots of startups, I copy for social media ads, newsletters, websites, blogs, anything you can think of that required some form of copy. And I eventually ended up at an incubator and accelerator in Lagos called Co-Creation Hub where I started working as a UX researcher and now 10 years since that first gig and 7 years since CC Hub, I've worked with and at some of the best companies in the world doing things that I enjoy. I didn't necessarily plan out any of these things but I did some things that looking back I can see helped me to get into those positions. Number one, learn, do, share aka be visible. If you followed me for some time, you may be familiar with a workshop that I have taught, um, which also has an ebook called Be Visible. I'll put the links in the show notes. And there I talk about how I pretty much learned on the job for most jobs and I practiced what I learned and shared about it. And when I was doing the sharing, I didn't have any grand plans. I just like talking on the internet. And that's what led me to almost every opportunity I've gotten. In the Be Visible workshop and book, I talk about how you can decide what you want to talk about and how to actually create the content around the things you enjoy doing and enjoy sharing about. You don't have to share about anything that you don't want to and you don't have to share on every platform that exists. I personally think that like 95% of the opportunities I've gotten, whether full-time, freelance, speaking engagements, workshops, whatever, I can link almost 95% of them to something that I have put on the internet, whether in another talk I give somewhere or a conversation that I had with someone where I was talking about something that I was working on or just something that I wrote about online. My current job is the first job that I actually had to apply to get. And even in that process, the hiring manager kept referring to some of the things I had created and shared through my website. And my favorite quote from my Be Visible workshop is, It's not who you know or what you know that matters. It's who knows you know what you know. If people don't know that you can do the thing that you're great at, then they can't recommend you for opportunities. Number two thing, be okay with saying no. To say yes to things, you have to say no to other things. I touched on this briefly in the previous episode on Focus. But in career terms, there are things that just won't work out for you. You have to be willing to say no and not feel guilty about it or not live in regret land by thinking too much about what might have been, what you should have done or not done, blah, blah, blah. If you've said no, move on. Don't think about things too long. At any given point, filter opportunities through the lens of what is important to you and why. And also know that some no's may be permanent and some may not be. Me saying yes to my first UX research role was a temporary no to pursuing an academic career in psychology, which is something that I'd always wanted to do up until that point. Which brings me to my next point. Number three, be open to trying new things. I never planned a career in UX. I was very sure that after my undergrad, I was going to do a PhD in psychology. That was the plan. Everyone who knew me knew this. But an opportunity opened up at CC Hub as a UX researcher, and I decided to go for it because it was low risk for me. The potential benefits greatly outweighed the possible loss. I was just about to start my final year of undergrad when that role opened up, and I thought to myself that if it didn't work out, I could just focus on going to grad school, and in that case, I'd have learned some new things. If it works out, it's a good career path. Either way, I'd have earned some extra income while in school, more than double what I had been earning up until that point. So... Generally, my personal rule is as long as it's not illegal, it's not immoral, it's not at odds with what I believe God has said, and it's not at odds with my personal vision and what I have said is important to me, I will try everything at least once. I will try to try everything within the boundaries of saying those things, obviously. I can't say yes to everything. If it's low risk with a high potential upside and it fits into my current vision, what I think is important, if there's a pivot going on in the world, whatever most likely I will do it. Number four, money is important, but it's not everything. 
I've turned down job offers that would have paid me significantly more than what I was earning or even speaking opportunities because they were not, um, they were overlapping with like personal opportunities and personal time with my family, my friends, something else that was more important to me. But I just knew that it was not right for me at that time. That is why it's important for you to know the reason for what you choose to do or not do. When I left my role at Interswitch, I was already on path to building and leading a research team and getting a senior title. However, when I thought about the opportunities available at Google, the fact that I'll be working with other researchers the first time in my career, and also the fact that I will be working on Google Assistant, which was a voice-enabled um, interface versus what I've been working on for the past couple of years at that point, which was your standard Android app with a graphical user interface. It made so much sense to me to move. I didn't just move because it was Google or that they would pay me significantly more than what I was earning at the time, I think five times or six times more. In fact, before I started working at Interswitch, I had turned down an offer to work on a different project at Google. I had other things I wanted to focus on then and I don't regret that decision because Google's contract was also a short-term contract and there was always the risk of it not being renewed. But at the time, the second time that they came to me with that opportunity, it made sense, it fits, and so I took it. Number five, keep track of your work. This isn't only helpful for performance review cycles, it's also helpful to see how you've improved across your journey. It can also help you with things like creating case studies for when you're interviewing, telling the story of your work and your journey. You could also develop talks, articles, workshops, and other things from the work that you've done and the impact you've created in your workplace. And these um, other expressions of of what you've done are impact multipliers you can reach way many more people through your talks through your articles posting on linkedin instagram social media and it links back to the first thing i said which is be visible learn do share as you're learning things do them practice them and as you're practicing share what you've practiced and what you've learned about the process So to recap, five things that I've learned thus far. One, be visible, learn, do, share. Two, be okay with saying no. Three, be open to trying new things. Four, money is important, but it's not everything. Five, keep track of your work. I will share five more things in the next episode because it's 10 years, so I'm sharing 10 things. And you can probably tell that I have a code, <laughs> but I had to like publish this episode. And finally, if you have any questions, any topics you would like for me to cover, please send me questions, send me suggestions. You can leave it as a comment if you're on YouTube or you can send me an email to me at ladetawak.com and I will try to cover it in a future episode. Thank you. Thank you for joining me on today's episode of A Couple of Things. If you enjoyed this episode or found any part of it insightful, don't forget to share with your friends on your social media and be sure to leave a comment or a review if you can on your podcast listening app. Thank you. Thank you.